Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw. I'm here aboard MSC Davina, and we're heading for MSC Ocean Key, the private island that is just opening, uh, just opened a, f a month or two ago, here on, for MSC. And we're here with Dr. Owen O'Shea. Now, why is a doctor on board? Well, I'm not sick, I tell you that much, but we are heading there for a very special reason. We're going to find out all about that and more on Insider Travel Report. First of all, tell me exactly, you're a doctor, but you are associated with what organization? Uh, I'm the CEO of the Center for Ocean Research and Education, or CORE, um, in Eleuthera Island, Bahamas. Yeah, and so you've been working with MSC on this project, and tell us a little bit about how it all started and, and what you're doing. Um, MSC first came to me about two years ago and they asked me for some advice on their um, research infrastructure on this new island that they had acquired um, and they were telling me about the conservation agendas and projects that they had that they wanted to establish on the island and slowly you know one sort of um, consultation turned into another and now I'm pretty much um, running the shark research on the island and I act as a scientific advisor to the, the MSC Foundation board as well. Yeah, so you are a specialist in sharks and I think rays as well, right? That's correct, yeah. Stingrays came first and, uh, you know, a stingray is a flat shark. They're all the same kind of thing, so it's a, it's a natural union. Now, what exactly are you trying to do with uh, Ocean Key? I mean, you're trying to increase the population of sharks and, and, and rays, or uh, what, is, what, is, what is your goal with this project? That's a good question. Um, sharks are actually protected in the Bahamas. They have been since 2011, so there's no commercial fishing for sharks or artisanal fishing for sharks in the Bahamas. So we're not trying to restore shark populations. What we're trying to do is understand the role of Ocean Key in the lives of sharks which sharks are in the waters around Ocean Key, how do they use that space, how do they interact with the environment. So we have done multiple surveys all around the island looking for other fishes as well as sharks and rays, um, really with a view to understand how we can better manage the shark populations around the island, particularly considering the volume of people that are going to be visiting the island um, each week. Um, and the next phase of this research is to establish a long-term experiment that's going to last for about eight years. And on, on the island, with, uh, despite the fact that all the MSC guests are going, right? Absolutely, yeah. We're going to be tracking sharks around the island for the next several years so we can get a better idea um, and a higher resolution on the way these animals rely on the island and the habitat surrounding it. Now, uh, just to be clear, I don't have to worry about sharks when I go swimming in the island, right? Absolutely not, no. You know, there are sharks in all the world's oceans. Um, in the Bahamas, as I said, they are protected. So this is a place where people come to see sharks. Um, but at Ocean Key, we're going to be fine. Now, will guests have an opportunity to maybe see some shark at some point uh, and interact a little bit more or, what, or at least understand what you're doing, right? Absolutely. I, it's a lottery, really. Um, you could spend a hundred hours diving in the water and not see a single shark, or you could see one on your first dive. It all depends. There are so many variables and factors that determine how these animals use space. So it would be very difficult for me to predict whether people will see sharks. Um, there's a chance that people will, but certainly one of my roles this week as well is to talk to guests about Ocean Key, about the research we're doing. Uh, and, you know, if there's an opportunity to pass on some passive information about sharks and not to worry about them and what we're doing and why we're doing it, then that's what I've been doing as well. So. MSC's concept for a, a private island is a little different from maybe some of the other cruise lines in that it's really trying to get guests involved with the sustainable and ecology of the island, right? And that's what you're really looking at, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're trying to promote. I think that the uh, the historical nature of this island being a former industrial site. That's what I was saying. Amazing. I mean, what was it before? It was a it was a mining site. It's where sand for the beaches in South Florida were was was extracted from. So what MSC has done really is taken a degraded site and and it, um, improved it, um, but it's well, not drastically. <laughs> absolutely, and it's not just uh, it's not just like the physical appearance of the island itself, but. Um, the, the uh, ecological obligations that MSC has to creating a conservation area 
beneath the waves is really quite remarkable and there's not many other cruise line operators that I'm aware of that invest so heavily in um, ecological sustainability and conservation and I think that the potential to educate and communicate um, an awareness of, of our footprint um, is unparalleled considering the demographic and, and the volumes of people that are going to be seeing this island. So they can have a great time on the island but also get to understand a little bit about the ecology, sustainability of shark, of rays and I think they're making a big effort in coral preservation as well. Yeah, absolutely. Everything in the marine environment ties together. So the sharks are related to the corals, to the seagrasses. But the coral research is really quite interesting because historically, coral has undergone some drastic changes in the Caribbean region. And, and sort of is, is rapidly you know, disintegrating in some, some areas, right? Absolutely. And I think some of the work that MSC are investing in and the new collaborations that we're involving ourselves in is to um, take species of coral that have already demonstrated a, a resilience to certain environmental stressors propagate those corals, grow them in a nursery, and then outplant them on these reefs. And what this is going to do is it's going to create habitat for fishes, it's going to create healthy, strong coral reefs again around Ocean Key, but when these animals breed, the currents are then going to take this larvae away from Ocean Key, so hopefully these super corals can then propagate other sites in the region. So the, the impact and the reach that this project is having is beyond Ocean Key. Yeah, so you, you said the magic word super coral, which I love. We, we, I think we had a, a, one of your, your associates talked about it the other night, is this is coral that's gone through it all and has survived, right? Absolutely, yeah. Carl Lundin from the IUCN summed it up perfectly with his analogies. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's coral that just somehow seems to have done better faced with adverse environmental conditions. And uh, you've got to take these corals and propagate them and breed them and see if we can create resilient coral reefs um, against future predictions for climate change and ocean acidification and things like this. Now, what would you tell guests of MSC who are going to this island how to best experience all of this? Um, that's a really good question. Um, get in the water, see for yourself, don't be afraid, do something new, put on a mask, ask questions. Go snorkeling, see the corals, see the seagrasses, and if you're lucky, you might see a shark or a stingray as well. But get involved with what it is they're trying to do. Embrace the, um, uh, the, the agendas and the programs that MSC have because they believe in this as much as I do. And I think that through the passion we have for this project, I think it's easy to convince people of, of what we're doing. And um, I would just say get involved. Yeah, now, and you said you're committed to this project for like the next eight years or something, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe, I don't know. Uh, the, the project we're just about to establish in a couple of weeks' time is a long-term monitoring project. Um, I'm hoping to be around for, for most of it, yeah, um, absolutely. And how many times have you been out to, the, to Ocean Key? I genuinely have lost count. Um, <laughs> probably eight or nine. Right. We've conducted many, many hours of surveys uh, on reefs, fishes, conchs, sharks, rays, um, and we've done a whole bunch of workshops. I've been involved in the training of the Bahamian staff, um, like a scientific training, uh, how to recognize sharks, what species of sharks there are there. So we've been quite involved in many elements of this program, not just the research as well. I've been engaging with the, the staff as well. So. Holistically, for me, it's been an amazing experience so far, and <clears throat> it's my intention, certainly, to, to stay a part of this project for as long as I can. Well, fantastic. Well, Owen, thank you very much for taking the time to explain this, this amazing project that MSC is putting through in this Ocean Key Island. It's a lot more than a private island. Uh, it's a scientific uh, uh, project and, and experiment, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's very exciting, and we're only just beginning two years, five years, ten years from now. I, I just, I can't wait to see it, what's going to happen. It's going to be incredible. Watch the space. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.